Hey, what's happening? This is Brian Shanley, and you are listening to Brian James Shanley Raw. This is an unplanned episode. This is in response as I look at my emails and my, what is it, the Facebook Messenger, um, and I'm seeing it passed 36 different messages. I didn't even know 36 people gave a crap asking me, and I'm. it's a composite that I'm giving you, uh, but basically... In many ways, people are saying, when is the next time you're going to come on and give us some content? One guy went so far as to say, your your, uh, your content is like audio and video crack, and I'm addicted to it. Thank you for comparing my work and my labor to drugs. But anyways, <laughs> um, this is called Brian James Shanley Raw. You see the title uh, of that? Brian James Shanley, that's my name. This is my channel, and I choose when I come on here, and it's not up to anyone else. Um, I know that, what do the kids call it? They, they all say, like, I'm a content creator. I'm a digital creator. I'm an influencer, or whatever. And they all, I'm none of those things, and I'm not trying to be any of those things. You understand? Um, YouTube is a means to an end for me, but it's not the end, all right? Um, I'm a theologian, philosopher, author, lecturer, uh, apologist, polemicist, etc., uh, precious metals broker, debater. And so um, in the performance of those roles, when, it, when I have a message to come out or when I have an update on a project I'm doing, I come out here once in a while, but I'm usually the chooser of when. I sometimes let you guys pick what I talk about if there's something you want to hear me flow on. But um, the reason you haven't heard from me lately is because I don't have nothing to say. All right? Uh, I'm working on I'm writing several books. I've got stuff going on in the personal life. I've got legal stuff going on. Um, and so I haven't thought to come on here. I got to change a battery on a smoke alarm, apparently. I know that's irritating. Um, so just to, just to give you a fix, since it's crack, all right, I don't really have nothing to say, so I'm just going to freestyle. It's early in the morning. I've had no caffeine. The brain is not firing on every cylinder. But if you just want to know what I rolled out of bed thinking about this morning, I'll just tell you. Um, when I was a kid, I was born in 1976, which means I was a child in the 80s and a teenager in the 1990s. And it was, it was a hell of a ride, and uh, I would trade nothing. The good, the bad, the ugly, I would... I would not alter one experience because it, it formed who this person is right in front of you. Uh, but anyways, um, I want to say 1993 at the earliest, 94 at the latest, somewhere in there. Uh, I was invited by some of my friends to take the bus and go to St. Paul. Now, when I was, like I said, there was no internet to speak of. And cell phones were only in the hands of rich business tycoons or drug dealers. Regular people couldn't have afforded them, and if, if they could, they wouldn't have access, all right? You couldn't walk into a store and buy one. You had to know someone. So there was no cell phones to speak of, which meant that um, while you lived in this finite radius, outside of that radius, you knew there was a whole big, big world out there, but you knew very little about it except what you heard. The only things you knew was what you saw in your daily life, Okay. And uh, that was the things that took place in front of you. So I could live in South Minneapolis, and my only knowledge of North Minneapolis would be rumors. And I could live in North Minneapolis, and my only knowledge of South Minneapolis would be rumors, what I heard other people said. And when you went to that side of town, it was like, ooh, it was a mystery because you're going to this new place. St. Paul was a different animal. It was across the river, all right? And um, the thing about St. Paul is when you're in Minneapolis, you're it's like... If you're in ancient uh, times, Minneapolis is Rome, and Minneapolis is St. Paul, some some lesser town. You're like, oh well, screw it, I'll go there anyway. Um, but I remember getting invited to 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 visit my friends, and um, they said, I want you to be on your guard now because you're going to be in the hood. So that's short for neighborhood, and it just meant you're in the tough part of the city. And since I'm a South Minneapolis boy, where you're always hyper vigilant. Um, and it's, it's part of, it's fundamental, you know, a trip to the store going the wrong way on the wrong day could end up in your death or in some kind of situation. So you're being on my guard was no thing. Cause it was, it was just part of the, part of the DNA. 
culturally learned DNA. Um, so I, I guess it was not inherent, it was acquired, right? Um, anyway, so coming to St. Paul, I was like, all right, fine, I'll be on my guard. And it takes two buses and it takes three hours to get there or whatever. Three buses, two hours. It took a hell of a long time to get there when you're a kid and you have no car yet. So I get off on, I think it's University Street or University Avenue. It's like the, the main drag in St. Paul. And my friends are there. They're like, welcome to the hood. Welcome to the hard part of the city. And I looked around and I saw ladies pushing babies in their strollers. And I saw businesses that were intact. And I saw the place looked clean. And uh, I, I saw enough to know that if this is your worst neighborhood, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty safe. They said, no, you're in frog town. I looked around, I didn't see no frogs. All right. Um, I'm like, what are you talking about? The book of Exodus, the plague of the frogs? I don't see nothing. And uh, he said, no, um, when, when the French came and settled this neighborhood, uh, it was referred to, frog was a racial slur slash derogatory term about French people. So people not from there called it frog town, is, is what he told me. Like when you call something Chinatown, because it's populated by people who come from China. So I'm like, I'm even still, I'm like, okay, a frog town. It literally, I'm not kidding, they call it frog town. Um, if this is the hard part of the city, then I, I feel pretty safe. I feel pretty good, all right? And so... Um, it reminded me of some times when my friends who are from other countries, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, uh, Africa, East Africa, West Africa, etc. They come to America and they see the hardest parts of Minneapolis or Chicago or Detroit. And they say, if this is your poorest neighborhood in America, I feel pretty good. And I'm like, ooh, an outsider's perspective. Um, <clears throat> If, and I thought about it and I heard some of them talking. You know, if you go to that terrible neighborhood with the ghetto in the sky type of income-based high rises, all right, uh, where you think if you take the wrong turn, someone's gonna slit your throat and take everything you have. Um, one thing you look at is when you look at the roof of this building, all right, and you're talking the most section eight, the most, uh, food stamp, meth, crack neighborhood you can think of. On the roof, there's still the technological voodoo and apparatus to get cable, television, to get internet, okay? When you look in the parking lot of the worst neighborhood, there's a hell of a lot of cars. There's vehicles. And um, when you think statistically in these units, 99% of them have a refrigerator, uh, a stove and uh, running water um, and and many of them even have the luxuries of, of heat central heating uh, or central air or an air conditioner you're like just by virtue of that our poorest people in this country are more wealthy than some of the wealthiest in like a vast majority of other countries outside which means we in this country enjoy a standard of living that is without parallel in the history of the world. And right now, as you look at the news, whether it be in economics, politics, philosophy, uh, advertising, uh, news, etc., you are seeing that their major moves are being made against this quality of life being available to us. All right. And my humble, respectful heart's cry I've already talked for nine minutes and really haven't said shit. My humble, respectful heart's crime is that when you see uh, the, the agenda moving forward in its many facets and its many faces, that you A, have the IQ to see it for what it is, but B, you have the guts to call it on the carpet. But someone somewhere is going to call me names. They're going to call me a racist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, an Islamophobe, a uh, transphobe, a uh, uh, gay, what is, what is it, homophobic. They're going, to, they're going to call me all kinds of phobics because disagreeing with something means you're afraid of it. It's a passive aggressive way of calling you a coward for having a dissenting, dissenting voice. Don't fall for that. Even the word phobic is a propaganda piece that was authored in the marketing departments of corporations. 
and when someone vomits those out it just means they're a product of their time and I always ask them to the television teach you to sit and fetch and roll over too so um, you have to open up your mouth two things will happen number one someone in the room thinks like you but didn't have the guts to say it until you kicked open that door it takes one voice speaking in the darkness to spark the light all right the other thing is people walking around in this cocoon with these blinders on hear a dissenting voice for the first time and they're faced with a crisis where they have to think through everything they've been taught and put it up against facts and evidence and say oh there, there might be problems here all right i mean every if you think about the lies you believe before you were a christian or before you, you know, uh, you began to wake up to what's taking place. You know, you're embarrassed by some of those things, but what happened that caused that mega shift? Someone somewhere had the guts to risk that you were going to call them a name to tell you something. I'm not asking you to storm the beach of Normandy. I'm not asking you to, to, to spill your blood. I'm asking you to risk possibly being called offensive by some hypersensitive, wussy, girly, limp-wristed hairdresser from San Francisco that wants to silence you. Open your mouth and say something while you have the freedom to do it. I guess that's all I have to say. So you guys milked a, a free rant out of me on a morning I was not prepared. I will come back to you um, when I feel good and ready. I'm working on a couple of things, and you guys have emailed me some stuff that you would like to hear me flow on. Um, I don't even have any new episodes that are in the can that I've filmed that are, that are ready to be uploaded. I have one, but now it's dated material and I would have to reshoot it because it's already, you know, the issue I was dealing with has already evolved. And yes, everything I said would happen has happened, but I was right. There's a shock, <laughs> but um, airing that one now would just not make any sense. So. I don't have anything new to give you. When I have something new, I'll tell you, all right? I'm working on some books. You're gonna be excited. I have some books that they're gonna change people's lives. When you're working on something really hard and a lot of things come across your path to prevent you from finishing it, that's one of the strongest indicators as to the potential impact of that project. The greater that project is gonna impact people, the more opposition comes to it. It's satanic. But I know that uh, the God that saved me and uh, rescued me from the fire is going to push me through all of the, all of the opposition. And I'm going to ultimately uh, speak the truth that honors him and glorifies his son and edifies and opens some minds. All right. God bless you. And uh, I hope this satisfies the fix uh, for the addiction of, of the, the flow or whatever you want to call it. And uh, keep the messages coming, but they should be, hey, I'd like to see blah, blah, blah covered. Not, when are you going to do it again? I'm going to do it when I do it. <laughs> All right, bye. Take care.